Welcome back to the Golden Trail World Series. We're here with a double episode for you because we're in the United States of America for Pikes Peak Trail Race and the Flagstaff Trail Race. Strap in people, it's going to be epic. Springs, which is the start of Pikes Peak Ascent. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of tourism around. So much so that they've actually moved back the dates to a time when there'll be less tourists, so there's more space for the runners. We're at 4,000 meters and I'm jogging but you can hear the impact it has on my breath because my body's not adapted and neither will be some of our athletes. So if they don't slow down, they're gonna be left like this where they just can't breathe and that means they can't run. Two thousand meters, and people come here not just for the elevation, but also for this famous shop. Twelve times winner Mac Carpenter set up this ice cream store. You've got to have it if you're going to race. Have some at home. The Manitou Incline is a really famous set of steps in America that goes up the mountain towards Pikes Peak. It's super steep and really hard. 2,768 steps, it's 0.88 miles, and it gains 2,000 feet over that 0.88 miles. I think there's a few things that make the incline hard. The elevation here is always a factor, so it starts really high and it ends really high. And it's also very, very steep. I'm Andy Wacker and I'm from Boulder, Colorado. Welcome to my neighborhood. Yeah, so Pikes Peak Ascent is really incredible because this is one of the biggest mountains anywhere in the U.S. And we're at this really cool spot in Colorado where the plains meet the mountains. So it's your first opportunity to be able to run up almost 8,000 feet of ascent in 13.1 miles. Yeah, the start of the race is really fast. You start on the paved road and run right through Manitou Springs. So once you get on the trail, um, you pass by the incline, you get off the pavement, you get on the trail, and you start on the bar trail, um, in a part they call the W's, and the W's are called that because they're really steep switchbacks. Um, and this part's really tough usually because your heart rate just spikes, and it's so early in the race, you gotta be really patient because it already starts hurting and you know how much longer you have to go. So altitude definitely makes it just super tricky. Of course you're breathing hard, of course you're going slower and everything just seems like a struggle. So you're trying to remember your race plan, you're trying to keep um, focused and it's really hard just to think straight. So I remember just trying to um, focus on what I was doing during the race a few years ago and I was just trying to take my mind off of what the pain during the race. I couldn't remember my roommate's name. So it was that bad, you're breathing so hard you just don't even know what's going on. Happy 
days. Happy fucking days. Have some coffee. Mm. Café, caca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're here at the start of the Pikes Peak Ascent. As you can see, it's so early, the start line isn't even set up yet. It's gonna be a half marathon with over 2,300 meters of climbing, so this is gonna be a brutal race. In the men's, Remy has to be the favorite. He's the best climber in the world right now, but he's up against Joseph Gray, who's got the record and won here multiple times. Bart is also in incredible form. He's gotta be on the podium for sure. But the women's is far more complex. Maud, Ninka, Ali, and Sophia can all win. They've got differing form and altitude's gonna play a massive part. All four of them could genuinely take home this title. I'm not gonna call it, it's too close. So yeah, at the beginning of the race, I really tried to follow a bit the pace of the order and see how, how they was. And there was uh, American guys who make a bit the pace at the beginning. And yeah, Joe and the other was already behind. And uh, then I see that it was not the pace that I want to, the speed I want to go. So I decided to, to pass and make my own race. The start in general went really well. And I started out with most of the women were, there was a big, or a good solid group of us. Um, and so I was just trying to hang with them um, and pace it well, yeah. I catch uh, the group of the podium and I pass and I do an attack. Same position, yeah. Remy and Joe in front. I check my watch uh, at bar camp and I see that the, the time was quite good, like I was on pace for the record, so it motivates me to, to push, but then with the altitude it was yeah, impossible to go faster than what I was going. In the middle part of the race, uh, there was this flat section and I wanted to speed up, uh, but it was harder than I thought with breathing. So this, I think this was the first moment where I realized, oh, I, I think I'm quite high. So I made it to bar camp, which is around seven and a half miles. Um, feeling super good. Actually made it like a minute faster than I ever had before. I had to walk and run and walk and I thought of, okay, it's not a good day for me. The runners have just come past the A-frame and it is so super close. Remy is in the lead as we expected, but about 40 seconds behind them is Joseph and Danny together. From what I can tell, Danny is making moves, so it could be he overtakes and gets a bit of a lead, but I think those will be our top three. When we got up to the three line, there was Anthony and Chad in front of me. I could see them. It was there that I actually started to have somewhat better feelings.
In the ladies, they are all on the absolute limit. Ninka is ahead and about 30 seconds behind her is Sophia and behind them it's super close. Maud is there but she's looking tired and it seems like Ali is making moves. So by the top I think we've probably got our top two and then third and fourth all battling it out. We got out of tree line and there was a lot of open soap shacks and that's when I saw mode a few down below me. In the no forest part I can uh, shoot Remy, but I control the distance with Remy is all time one minute. I look back, I look who is coming, Maud, and like full gas. So I thought, shit, she, she's gonna catch me. I really need to put in a big effort here. Having Pikes Peak part of the Golden Trail Series is super special as it's a hometown race for me and to have everyone come and do it is to make it more competitive. I think to win again here it's uh, special because I won in 2017 and to win the marathon and the ascent is cool to, to have the name on the rock. Representing Solomon, Remy! Very, very happy because for me to do a podium in Golden Treasury is a, it's a dream. To cross the line if, um as a first woman. I did not realize it until uh, a bit later because I was a bit uh, away. Second place is a good place. I'm happy with this uh, second place. My best day, it would have been great to win, but I, overall, like I'd never raced those women and it was cool to still be in the, on the podium. Wow, what a finish to the race. Remy held on for first place with Danny coming through to second. Joseph in third, in fourth, Ellie Hemming, and fifth, Francesco Pupi. On the comeback from injury, incredible. In the ladies, it came back to just over a minute. Ninka held on, Maud was in second, and Sophia Lockley came through in third. Ali held on for fourth, and Kib Dobson, course record holder, an impressive fifth. What a race and what a course. Pikes Peak, we thank you, but keep on watching because we're heading to Arizona Flagstaff for the Flagstaff Trail Race. The tour now moves to Flagstaff, Arizona for the final stage of the Golden Trail World Series. Flagstaff is renowned for its ski resorts, nestling at over 2,000 meters in elevation. It's also on the famous Route 66, which runs all the way from the coast of California to Chicago. This year's course has been designed afresh for the Golden Trail to increase the amount of descent for our runners. Let's see exactly what it entails. After Pike's Peak, I am really excited for the Battle of Sunday. I also very happy with my second position in Pike's Peak. It's my first podium in Golden Trail Series, and for me, it's incredible. And I try to do my best in Sunday. I think uh, for me it's very important this race because it's the last change uh, before Madeira and I try to improve my classification because I, I have only two races uh, with points and I try to improve the 10 position now. I think the flat part, the first part, I think it's like a cross-country race. I think the, the pace will be so hard and also the, the road part in the near the summer. The 
transición between the wide open trade and after the, the step par, I think it's very important in the race because I think in this part of the race is my best part because it's so much a step, they are a long climb and I try to win time for the, the downhill and I think for me this is really, really good. first part of the descent is about two miles long. It's super steep uh, on ski slope, very loose, rocky footing down to the Arizona Trail. After you run the first two miles of the downhill, the terrain le levels out of it. It gets way less steep. You, you get onto a very runnable, very fast, packed out dirt trail uh, to the finish. If someone takes a big risk on the first two miles of the descent, the, the very steep section, they could get a lot of time but there's a full six miles of flat, gradually downhill trail where you could get you know, 30 seconds a mile, almost a minute a mile if you really conserve yourself and someone else is fading and you're, you know, you're, you're coming on strong in the second half of the race. It's very cool to have uh, Golden Trail come to, come to Flagstaff. Um, you know, there's deep running routes in this town. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of styles of running. We have road runners, track runners. There's a, a strong trail running. Uh, it's cool to have some of the best uh, mountain runners in the world, you know, on our trails and uh, duking it out and seeing who's the best. Warm up. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> it's the morning of Flagstaff Sky Peaks. 1,200 meters of ascent over 26 kilometers. In the women's, Dinka's clear favorite, but the real story is who's a better descender between Maud and Sophia. Whoever wins that battle will get second today. Remy and Danny will be leading us to the peak. I don't think this is technical enough for Manu. Bart and Francesco, if fit, would win this, but are they? Today, Kipchoge ran 2.01. Watch and learn. It's going to be the race of the season. Good day, good legs from the start to the end, so pretty nice race. <laughs> yeah, I really try to like to like say the, the message to the other that I was not tired from bike speak and that uh, I, I was here also to win that one. Today the race was really special for me because it was a, a race where it was like a, really a battle. Felt good at this pace and I didn't also want to check too much. I just wanted to, to do this pace. I was comfortable and I wanted to stay like this. So I was, my strategy or whatever was, I wasn't gonna really gonna try to stay with anyone. I just wanted to race my own race. I think last weekend I maybe pushed too hard at the beginning. So my goal was not to stay with Yankee at the beginning because I knew she was just gonna be flying and that would just blow me up. We're 6K in and wow, Remy has come out battling. I've never seen him start so fast. He's already got a sizable lead ahead of two North American runners, including Sam Hendry. Behind them are Danny and Francesco. The big question is, can Remy get enough of a lead to keep it by the bottom? In the women, it's kind of going to form Ninka far ahead, but then Sophia is gapping Maud and Ali. I think the way she's looking, she's good for second, but we won't know until Maud hits that downhill. We got into the steeper parts of the uphill and I was running with Eli and uh, Danny bridged up to us from behind and he was super strong, he just blew right past us.
Um, I passed Nyanke, like, I don't know exactly where, but there were a few, or one or two steep pitches um, left of the climb. The downhill, I start a bit more or less slow because I need to drink, I need to eat, and I need also energy for the flat bar. It, we were going down this steep bit, um, probably maybe a K after the top of the hill, and Sam goes flying right by me. <laughs> Once we got on the grass technical part, um, I, I saw Ninke and I was like, oh no, this isn't good. Like, I shouldn't be up this high this early in the race. But then we got on a real technical part and I, I felt great. And so um, I was able to pass her there. You can go! How? <laughs> I knew the downhill would be really good for me, so I just took off and I passed Eli, passed Danny, moved into second place. After the quite dicey part that a lot of people were falling on, uh, I just kind of geared in and told myself I had eight miles to go of downtown. First I overtook Tabor, then there was a group of Blondine, Bailey, and Elise. I think the last 12k was really fun, like in the single trail, I really tried to push like all the smaller fields and I really had fun here. Yeah. This race has erupted. Eli Hemming and Sam Hendry are both new to this sport and we weren't sure if they could run downhill. The answer is yes, they can. Eli's got a slight lead. I think Remy's got enough of a cushion, but they are flying down this mountain. In the women's, we weren't sure whether Sophia had the technical skills to try and catch up, but actually she's caught Ninka and Ninka is now on her shoulder having to run at a pace that she's not used to on terrain that she doesn't know. Just behind them is Ali and those two are running so fast I think one of them might blow up so Ali could still come second and Maud is close behind in fourth. From the start I knew that the plan was to go under two. Yeah to do the seven minutes under was really a good job I think today. <laughs> Honestly, like it means so much. I've watched uh, all these Golden Trail Series races and kind of just sat in awe of all these athletes. So it's awesome to be racing with these top guys. Yeah, coming third in the Golden Trail Series race is super motivating and I can't wait to get back next year and be in even better shape and run even faster. So I had uh, tears. I never had this before, but I, there was a lot of emotion first because I, I won three races in a row, which is, from, yeah, it was really a big thing for me. I was really, really happy. I think I was happier with this race than I was last weekend. I think I just, I felt really good the whole time. For me, that's 
that is kind of the goal. Like, I mean, I like to win in a competitive field like this, but I'm super stoked to finish third. What a race that was. Remy must love America. Two races, two victories. Behind him, Eli Hemming showing he's got class and trail. Sam Hendry, his first big performance at Golden Trail. Danny Sands in fourth, and Anthony Felber coming through for fifth. In the women's, that was the battle all the way to the finish. Sophia caught Ninka with her downhill running skills, but Ninka's speed saw her through to the line to take first again. Two races, two wins. Sophia in second, Ali in third, Maud in fourth, and Lauren Gregory, fifth. Her first Golden Trail performance on the podium. The results of Flagstaff have made quite a change to our table. These are our top 10 at the end of the six races, but really the season starts now. We're heading to Madeira for five back to back to back to back to back races, and it's all gonna change. See you in a month. That's us done for the States. Next up Madeira, that won't be quite as dry.